came down in his suit and uh, with his jacket off and he just sat there and he lit a cigarette and he waited. Did he say anything like what's going on or what do you need to talk to me about or did he just sit there and wait? No, he just waited. And what did you do? Um, I waited and we had this awkward period um, just to, waiting for my dad to talk first because he always does. Uh, and uh, eventually I realized he wasn't and so I just sort of went ahead with what I had planned to say as best I could. What did you which say? Which was that, that I, I knew everything that was going on between him and Eric and that it had to stop and that it had to end and that I didn't want to disrupt the family and I wasn't going to tell anybody but that um, there had to be some changes and if, if I had to we would come out of the house we would leave the house if he didn't want us to live there but that we wanted to live there for now and um, I wanted to take Eric to Princeton with me and then maybe transfer to UCLA and that uh, this is this had to happen and that uh, I meant it. How did you feel when you were telling him all this? Um, sort of just really worrying about the words more than anything. And did you say it all at one time like you did here or did you say something and then he said something? No, I, he didn't say anything. He was looking around the room and uh, you know, he had his cigarette lit, and uh, he was, I remember he was playing with his ear, like he does a lot. Um, Did he look at you at all during this? Didn't look at me at all, which, which at some point, I, I was sort of rambling, trying to get all the words out. At some point I realized I had finished saying what I was saying, and I stopped, and uh, we had another silence. And then he said, uh, did he continue looking around and playing with his ear during the silence? Or did he change? Well, I don't remember, but at some point, once I stopped, he asked me if I was finished. And then I said that I was. And uh, he put his cigarette, he had crossed his legs, his legs were crossed, he put his cigarette out. And uh, then he started talking. And did his position change, or? Did he just... No, that, well, now he was looking at me, and he was, he was basically looking down at me, so I was pretty far below him, because um, this couch sort of just sunk back in it, and uh, he said what he said, which is... What did uh, he say? Basically, I, he said, you listen to me. What was his tone of voice? Very, uh... His, usual tone of voice when uh, you had better understand what he was saying. Can you do it? Uh, Can you imitate it? Pretty well. Can you show me? He just said, you listen to me. And um, What else did he say? And if you can do it the way he said it to you. I don't remember most of what he said. He said, uh, um, what I do with my son is none of your business. And he said, uh, I warn you, don't throw your life away. Just stay out of it. I remember that. And then he said something else, and then he, he said that, uh, let me tell you what's going to happen. He said, you're going back to Princeton, and your brother's going to UCLA like we planned, and we're going to forget this conversation ever took place. And when he finished talking? Um, I interrupted him. He didn't get to finish talking. Oh, he started saying this, and I knew what was happening. It was just like our other conversations we had where he was just dismissing it. And uh, I told him, I swore and told him he was a, a fucking sick person. And I told him no, and that he wasn't going to touch my brother again. And I threatened him. How did you threaten him? I told him that I would tell everybody all I tell I would tell everybody everything about him I would tell the police and that I would tell the family and uh, Did you I was that? I was yelling and it was pretty um, I may have said some more things and swore at him or something 
And uh, as soon How as I... How were you feeling? I was feeling like it was... I was losing control of the conversation. It wasn't going to go well. I, I had a feeling it wasn't going to go well. And uh, I also was bracing myself for a punch or some something physical. And uh, And he was... It seemed like he was going to do that when I uh, was saying those things to him. So I don't think anybody had ever spoken to him like that in his whole life. Were you pretty out of control when you were? I, mean, I was you pretty. Did it on purpose, or were you? Had you lost control? No, I was. I was. I had lost control because I had. We, my brother and I, had discussed me uh, not threatening him, if at all possible. And I didn't really think that I was going to have to. And I ended up just doing it. And uh, that was a mistake. So you, you're you screaming at him, you're telling him he's sick, and you're going to tell everybody. Right. What's he doing while you're doing this? Well, he, he seemed like he was going to uh, attack me in some way. or just, I don't know. He was leaning forward. Uh, his legs are uncrossed. And... Um, and that's basically all I remember. And then when I, after I threatened him, his demeanor changed pretty drastically. How did it he, change? He just, he, he sort of relaxed. He sat back, and he just sort of looked at me, and that made me stop um, because he happened? seemed so relaxed. What happened after then, you stopped? Then he said, um, he said, we all make choices in life, son. Eric made his, and you've made yours. And then he just looked at me, and he got up to leave. What did you think? I thought, oh my God, he thinks I'm going to tell people, regardless. I knew what he was thinking, and I told him, I started pleading with him before he left. I got up and said, Dad, you know, I, I'm only going to tell people if you don't stop touching Eric, if it doesn't stop. <laughs> And uh, he just looked at me and said, you're going to tell everyone anyway. And he left. And I sat back down, thinking that it was a disaster, and that my brother was in, we were in, I had just made it a hundred times worse. What did you think was going to happen? I thought we were in danger. I thought he had no, he felt he had no choice. But to what? that he would kill us, that he would get rid of us in some way. Why? Because he thought I was going to ruin him. And he was going to tell my mother what I said. And I knew immediately what her reaction would be. You can never let that happen to us. And uh, What do you mean to never let that happen to us? What do you mean by that? Well, their image was their life. At least that's my, that's how I felt, especially about my mother. And, I don't know if my, what my, you know, I really, I thought afterwards about exactly what my dad was thinking that I was going to do, because I would never have ever told anybody. But I did make that threat, and I think he just felt that maybe my own stuff with him, or I was trying to get revenge or something, or, I'm not sure what he thought. Why do you say you wouldn't have ever told anybody? I don't, I would never have, I would not have done that to him. I would never have told people. It was really an idle threat. I never had thought about telling people. I didn't know who I was going to tell. I wasn't going to tell the police. I wasn't going to tell relatives. I would have taken my brother out of the house before I had this conversation, but uh, I wouldn't have just told people.